I've been dumped in the middle of a foreboding, eerily quiet wilderness, like you typically are in open-world survival games. As I make my way to the nearest coast, I'm startled out of my foraging by a bestial grunt and prepare to defend myself. But the hunched and disheveled creature pursuing me stops several yards short of tearing my face off and waits to see what I do. This was the moment I realized the forest was going to spend the next 30-ish hours cleverly and terrifyingly subverting my expectations. The wooded alpine peninsula that becomes your home is inhabited by several tribes of feral, macabre cannibals who mark their territory with grotesque effigies of human skin and bone from their victims. They're not suicidally aggressive, though, and that's what makes them so unsettling. The forest's greatest triumph is the convincing self-preservation of the AI that governs their behavior. Sometimes they run away. Sometimes they're content to follow you at a safe distance to figure out where your base is so they can report back to their friends. Sometimes they'll charge you to test your mettle, but stop short if you don't back down. There are fascinating and observable differences in behavior between the different tribes, between individuals in the same tribe, and even contextual attitudes based on how much they have you outnumbered, what time of day it is, and how much you've changed the environment with the simple but functional base building system. The feeling that I was sharing these woods with intelligent enemies with the capacity for rationality and complex decision making sent actual shivers up my spine. It's fear above and beyond being chased by something that just wants to kill you as fast as possible. Below the surface, things can get a bit more frustrating. A big source of this frustration was the fact that for some reason the forest doesn't have any gamma adjustment settings, and the default left many story-critical caves outright too dark to play through without darkening the room around me. Your only renewable light source is one of those little gas station lighters which can barely let you see as far out as your own outstretched hand, and this led to a lot of getting lost. Using darkness to create tension can be great, but this is overdoing it. The story you discover down in those depths is worth the trek, though. It's a multi-layered and creepy slow burn, doled out through abandoned camcorder tapes, disturbing discoveries, and clues left behind by your son who was kidnapped just after the plane crash that stranded you here. The mysteries go deep and take you to some very unexpected environments that excitingly contrast the arboreal overworld and natural cave systems. The relatively small size of the map, at least compared to other survival games, is also a boon, making it more likely that you'll find at least some of the story areas without having to dive into a wiki. On top of your food and water gauges, a sanity score tracks how far you're willing to go to survive, up to and including going native and cannibalizing the cannibals. The final moments of the story tie up the question of how much of your humanity you're willing to lose to survive with an interesting moral choice. However, I do wish sanity had more noticeable impact on how you play. Other than unlocking the ability to build effigies out of body parts to mark your territory when it gets below a certain point, the difference between 100% and 0 felt pretty negligible. The 8 player co-op mode offers a distinctly different and enjoyable way to play. Having friends takes the tension down several notches and makes some of the story stuff almost trivially easy, but also enables building imposing and expansive bases that would be prohibitively time-consuming alone. Since the inhabitants of the island become more persistent and aggressive as time goes on, especially if you plop a fortress in the middle of their hunting grounds, it becomes something of a horde mode that I had a really good time with. I've never been terrorized, stalked, or fascinated by enemy AI quite like I was in the forest. It's a harrowing survival ordeal that knows how to play with tension and create a sense of a real world with complex inner workings and mysteries I was eager to discover. It's I Am Legend told in the depths of the hinterlands, with a meaningful story progression that doesn't overstay its welcome. Disregard the warnings on the walls and hidden between the trees at your own peril. But if you want a unique and memorable survival horror experience, then you should absolutely dare to do so. For more survival games, check out our reviews of Rust, Subnautica, and Frostpunk. And for everything else, stick with IGN.